Okay, everyone, we're going to start the event. Thank you for waiting. How are you today? Good. Uh, thank you for coming for another event at Dojo. My name is Anti. I'm the event coordinator here. And today I'm so happy because after a long hiatus, the conversion clinic by Nils Katow is back. Let's give applause for Nils. So this is the seven. So we we uh, we make people cry six times already. So this is like the seven times that we're doing this. Any of you have been to the previous ones? No? Yeah, some of you. So um, if you haven't been uh, to the event, like brief introduction is that Niels will review some of the website that you have submitted. Any of you submit websites? No? You? <laughs> they don't want to admit it now. Yeah, so Niels will like give advice uh, on how you can do better on your website. So as his motto, consulting through insulting. So the event will be about one hour. Usually it lasts a bit longer, like one hour and a half. But Niels will try his best to fit it into one hour. If you have questions and answers, uh, you can wait by the end of the event and we can open question and answer session. Cool? Are you ready? Yes, so let's give applause for Nias Katal. Thank you. Um, yeah, so if you have any questions, don't wait until the end because we usually don't have time for questions in the end. So just ask whenever you want to ask. Uh, very quickly about me because I guess most of you don't know me because I haven't been here for a while. So my name is Niels. I'm uh, doing all of the things you can see behind me. And so I did conversion optimization since 2004, worked with many, many big clients. So I had like three. Um, can you hear me? Because I can't hear myself. Okay. Uh, I've been working with 300 clients throughout 14, 15 years now. And uh, the cool thing is that I could test so many things for them. So I was doing a lot of A-B testing uh, with clients like the ones you see behind me. And uh, yeah, in this time, I could learn a lot of things that you can basically apply to many websites in this world. And this is kind of the reason why we set up this event. So I would just go through members' websites and tell them what I would change from my point of view. Very important to know, I don't have any analytics access, so it's all just from my gut feeling, which is usually not how you should optimize a website, but I will maybe talk about this a bit more later. And um, yeah, so most of the things I say are kind of common sense, at least in my head, I hope in your head as well. And uh, also it's kind of from past experiences. So when I did test a few things, uh, I learned a lot of things. And so I try to apply this to the websites from today. I will just go to my browser. So the first page is from Afri. Is she here? No? Okay. So the first, yeah, I, I have to start with this one because this is a long one. And um, yeah, so we'll just wait until she's here so we can start. I don't know how to entertain you while we're waiting, though. So, um. oh right, we can talk about this. So we will uh, have karaoke tonight with Vito, uh, wherever he is. I think he's taking her, uh, and we're starting here at 7:45 with our bikes, and then we will drive to some place called or, or Studio or something, and then hello, and then we will uh, sing karaoke and embarrass ourselves. Okay. So now you're here, hello. Thanks for uh, submitting your website. So very important, whenever I talk about this website, I'm not focusing on the stuff that is nice. So I will not say, oh, this is beautiful, this is beautiful, but I will only or almost only focus on things that I would change from my past experience or from my point of view. And I try to be nice, although it's fun to be not nice in these events, but I try to be nice. Okay, so this is, uh, I have my notes here, which is why I'm always looking at this paper. So this is a website uh, about or from Crayon Mono, I don't, cry, uh, did I say it right? Okay, cool, uh, which is, I guess you can tell it's a swim brand because it says there under the logo. And I would just talk about the hero shot first. So the hero shot is the main image of a page. And this is, so the big <laughs> image that we see here in the background. And one thing that I recognize that you will not see on the beamer or on the projector, but the image that you have in the background is pretty low resolution. So the image is uh, one point, one, 1,200 by 628 pixels, but most images these, or most resolutions these days, so when you're on a website on your desktop, are higher than this. So it's like, if you have a, a, an HD display, it's like 1,920 by one, uh, 10, uh, 1080 pixels. And um, this leads to, when you at least look at this, 
at my screen or at any HD display, I think, uh, you will have an image that is kind of blurry and it doesn't look too high quality, which isn't a problem in general, but it's a problem in this case because you're basically selling your stuff through your pictures. So I would always aim just to have a slightly bigger image size so it looks nice on every display because here it, it's a bit blurry, dirty, it looks a bit weird on my screen. You can see if you want, but not now. Uh, usually, so what I would use uh, is a tool called, or, or uh, a script called retina.js. You can just Google for retina.js. And there you can, um, you can install it in your site just by adding one line of code. And then you can add or upload different sizes of your images. So you can just upload one for mobile phones. You can upload one for full HD. You can upload one for 4K or whatever. And then you have different image sizes, but it's always the right image uh, image size that is loaded. So you don't cause your website to blow up in terms of file size. So I would just use this and then, I don't know, 4K is probably not even necessary these days. But um, yeah, I would definitely go for HD. Um. <laughs> Okay, also what's very visible in this case, so you use your full viewport. So the viewport is the basically the part that your browser renders, so where you, where you can see the website, in this case the whole screen. Um, and you use the whole viewport for just one single product. So you're just showing one person wearing something, and you're probably not even selling everything that she wears, I guess. Or do you? No? Uh -huh. Okay. So right now, if I come to your site and I don't know your brand, which is the case, although I went to Law of Anchor and I just realized, oh my god, you were there. But I mean, not you, but your store. Um, and yeah, people still don't really know what you offer. So right now, you say swim in your logo, and so people can think, okay, probably I can buy this bikini there that she's wearing, but what if I don't like it? What, what if that's not my color? What if that's not uh, a, a, like a cut that I would wear myself? I mean, not me myself, but the women in this room. I only wear it at home. Um, yeah, what if they don't like it? And uh, what if they are interested in other products? Because you're also selling stuff like sunglasses, which is not visible at all. So people might come to this page and just see this. And even if they scroll down, they could go here and they see, OK, it's okay. here you say I wear, but still people might not realize that you sell other stuff, which you can find in the menu here. So if you click there, I'll just leave it open so you can see. All of this is not visible. So you should use your first viewport or the above the fold area, the, the area that people see before they scroll to make people understand what you offer, like your whole palette. You can do it in, uh, yeah, ask. Do you want to uh, say? Um, I, I just put a bikini because that's my main product. Like for the rest, it's just like uh, additional. Okay, even if it's your main product, then at least show you have different bikinis and not only this one, because it's all a matter of taste. And I mean, I'm, I'm not a woman, but uh, I guess. But if you come to a page and uh, you're interested in something to wear and you don't like the first image and you think it's ugly, which might happen because people have different tastes, then you're kind of turned off and that's not yeah. optimal. Um, okay, so what I would do is I would just use my first screen that I have on the page to show maybe uh, different images. You can have like a collage of images or something or just different boxes or anything where you show your products. You can still have one main thing, but I would then maybe put something on the right side or on the bottom or something where you can see I have more stuff that you can uh, buy. Another problem with this first screen that you have is you have no headline at all. So you just come there and you just say shop now, but you're not saying, hey, we are, who are we or uh, what do we offer or what can you find here? And this is, first of all, not great for SEO, so for search engine optimization. It's kind of important to have a headline. However, your logo on your homepage is your headline. So it's written in H1 tags if for the people who speak HTML. And uh, it has an alt tag or an alt attribute. So uh, right now, I don't know, I will just show it quickly so people know what I'm... Ah, I didn't want to click it, sorry. Ah, sorry. Um, so right now you can see here in the code that somewhere, sorry, this is mobile. Um, I, I shouldn't have done this. Um, so yeah, here you have your H1, and um, so here's the image, and the image has an alt attribute somewhere there where it says Korean Mono Swim. So you kind of have your company's title or your company name in your main headline on your homepage, which is kind of okay. I would still write a normal homepage on there. 
normally if you do it this way, so if you say my header contains my logo and my logo is my H1, my main headline, this happens on all subpages as well because you have your header on all your subpages. In your case, it's not the case. So you actually have a normal H1 on your subpages and your logo is not the H1 anymore, which is good. However, if you do it this way, many times people just have the same H1 on every page, which is just the logo with the same alt attribute, which is shit. Okay. Um, Okay, also about your headline, so I don't know what to say there because I'm not a copywriter and I will say this a lot of times today and I say it every time. Um, however, I would just yeah have a headline that makes people kind of want to shop now because right now you're just telling them by showing them a picture but you could maybe add some copy there. Um, <laughs> okay, also when you look at this page, so you, you have this image, you show some products here and here you say something about your brand. So you say you're uh, a beachwear store in Changu, uh, you have bikini, blah, 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 blah. And this is basically what should maybe be your headline or your main headline, but still you're not giving people reasons to buy from you. So when you're in e-commerce or people can buy from you online, it's kind of important to make them understand you should buy from us and you should not buy from the one million other uh, brands that are out there. And for this, maybe, I don't know if you have it, but maybe you can add something there like, uh, I don't know, put something like some uh, elements or some, some graphical elements or some text there that says, uh, are we, like, have we, do we have handmade products or fair trade or what about our quality? I just wrote this down here. Like, uh, what about guarantees? Like, if someone's not happy with their product, I mean, you cannot return them, I read on your page, but maybe something you can say, or maybe do you have local designers or whatever. So just try to find some things that make people want to buy from you instead of from every other website. Looking at the navigation menu, whoops. So right now you have this here and you have this drop down menu on shop or under shop. And uh, there are some problems with the usa usability of your navigation. So for example, you can click all of these titles of your columns, however, they link nowhere. So as you can see here, um, they just link to the hashtag symbol. I don't know how this is called in English. Um, and this just basically means it links nowhere. So if you click them, nothing happens, but still you get a visual feedback. So you hover over them and you see it's underlined, but nothing happens if you click them. So this is kind of weird. I would just remove the link if possible, or if you cannot re remove the link, you can just use CSS and say cursor default so that the cursor doesn't become the clicky finger. And you could also remove the underline of the word and then people will not know it's a link usually. Um, okay, one question for everyone. Uh, or especially for the women, I would say, uh, just raise your hand, please. Uh, who knows what crochets or crochets are? Who doesn't know it? Ha! So that's what I wanted. Um, so I had no idea and I asked uh, someone yesterday and she also didn't know it, so I was like, okay, maybe it's not only me, so I will ask this question. And um, I would say, if you have something that you sell, people need to understand what it is because actually the product that's behind there, I can go there, uh, everyone has seen it because every girl in Bali has one of these. It's these hand knitted, I don't know how to say it, but, oh, <laughs> wait, I, I promise there was, okay, so if you have empty categories, maybe don't put them in your navigation, um, but I can just click on all, so there are some, and so it's these where you, where you can basically see the underwear of people in this case, and um, this is fine, but if people don't know what it is, they will not click it because they're not like, oh, let me find out what this is. Most people will just ignore it. And so maybe there is another word that you can use for them that people would understand. Um, <laughs> also, more about your navigation. So you have uh, some double wordings here. So for, for example, you say bikinis and bikinis. And now if I just want a bikini, but I don't care if it's a see-through one or a normal one, where do I click? So maybe you can just have one category for all bikinis and then just restructure your navigation, maybe completely uh, go away from having this column here because maybe it's not important yet. You can just put all of these products into the other categories that you have, if that's possible. Um, <laughs> So the bikini uh, anchor text you use two times is also like uh, very problematic for um, SEO because Google has problems understanding which page um, is actually uh, the one you want to rank for bikinis. 
So uh, in this case, uh, the authority to rank for bikinis is split between between those two pages, because yeah. Um, so I would uh, definitely change the anchor there. Yeah. Thanks. If anyone else wants to add anything at any point, if it makes sense, just do it. Um, also, what I found a bit weird in your navigation is like you have one column for uh, something to wear, like clothes. Then you have clothes. Then you have accessoires. Then you have clothes again. So it's kind of I don't know, the just the whole usability of your navigation is a bit weird for me. Okay, what helps in these cases, what I like to do, if you have a navigation and you don't know what order should you put it or um, even what items should you put in there or what you shouldn't, then just write everything you have, like all these items that you see there right now, all the words, put them or write them on cards, shovel them, and then give them to someone who doesn't know your brand and just tell them, please put in or build a navigation out of this. This is called a card sorting test. And then uh, if you do this with multiple people, you will see kind of what people will uh, expect your navigation to be like. Also, um, when I click here, so on swimwear one pieces, you come to this page. And uh, first of all, your headline doesn't contain your main keyword. Like I'm, I don't want to talk too much about search engine optimization, but one piece can be everything. It can be one piece of shit. <laughs> Sorry. It can be like, I don't know, like one piece can be anything. It can, it, it doesn't have to be a bikini, it can or it doesn't have to be swimwear. A bikini, it cannot be, but it doesn't have to be swimwear, but it can be like a jumpsuit or something. And uh, you should just write something like one piece swimwear or something like this so that actually people understand what it is. Not only when they're on the site, but also when they're on Google and see your search result, because one piece as a title says nothing. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Also, what I would add, in general on every page that you have just some short introduction text so you could add your your reasons to buy from you under your headline you could have a sub headline or just have a sh short paragraph where you say something about yourself because right now people can only decide when they land on these pages which will happen a lot if you have good rankings uh, they can just decide by seeing pictures but they know nothing about you because they just landed here so also put this information on this page when you have the product listings here, um, first of all, what I found a bit disturbing is they don't follow the same pic uh, photography style. So you have these pictures here, then this one is totally filtered with some gray filter. Then um, you have this, which looks a bit like you got it from some Chinese wholesale website or something. No offense, just a slight offense. And uh, then you have these where you have just thrown the stuff on the floor and yeah. it's just it should all follow the same style yeah, uh, I wish uh, I'm doing my own shirt sometimes but um, mostly I'm doing the collaborate with the influencer mm -hmm. so mostly the picture I get it from the collaborate okay so yeah so far just doing the collaborate yeah. for but, the I shirt. but I guess it wouldn't be too hard to just I mean just ask around who wants yeah. to be uh, half naked on my website and people mm -hmm. might want to so no, I think it's easy. Seriously, like here, I think it's easy to find people who would do this, and you can just bring all of your bikinis, just shoot them, and and you're done. That's me not being a photographer saying this, but still, I think it's not that hard. Yeah, take the microphone for the recording. And if you work with influencers and a photographer, you can always ask them to um, either deliver, uh, not the Ross, because photographs won't do that, but deliver it in the same style, so or either like find one photographer to work with so that you all have the same style. Because I work sometimes with influencers as well, and with different brands, and I always make sure they match the brand and the influencers, so sometimes you do two different edits. Uh, well, before I'm, uh, before like with texting, before I, I send the stuff, but sometimes the influencer, they just like going by their self, like they didn't follow the rules, like they just take a picture like this, and Damn sometimes they just like, I have to wait for five months because they said, oh, I'm getting fat, and I'm not gonna take a picture for a moment, I, and I don't know what I have to do, so I'm just like, okay. So embrace your curves? Like but yeah, I don't know. No, so but maybe maybe then don't take influencers. Yeah. That cannot be your bottleneck. That's yeah, but like, uh, yeah. but so this year, uh, because last year, that's my first year to start the bikini. So I'm not doing the collaborate anymore with an influencer because I don't get a good thing. So I'm going to do the shoot for every product. So mm -hmm. that's all. Yeah, that's good. 
Yeah, because I see the picture that I uh, I, I shoot the product like that, but I don't, I don't even me like I'm not gonna buy it. But yeah. I just like I don't have any pictures. So yeah, I, I mean, yeah, of course the picture has to be beautiful anyway. Yeah. But also, if it looks like this, it's kind of bad for your branding, yeah, your know. brand recognition, uh, comparability. Like, do I rather like this one or do I rather like this one? I have no idea because I can't yeah. see from the images. So, all of this uh, should be solved by having consistent photos. Um, also, what I found, oopsie, what I found very important is um, showing the back of the piece that they wear, because um, I guess if you're a woman, you also want to look nice from behind. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, it's true, I guess. <laughs> can, can you please confirm so I don't feel like some weirdo? Thanks. And yeah, and so maybe you could do something like if people hover with their mouse over a piece, you just show the backside and maybe also show the different color options that you have because some of your products have different color options and you could show all of this just by hovering over. So that would be kind of easy on mobile. It's a bit different, but maybe on mobile you can just add another image or something like this. Um, also, you see the, cur uh, the the prices here. So right now, I mean, we know where we are and we know it's not ridiculously expensive. But if someone comes there and you're not only shipping to Indonesia, you're also shipping to other parts of the world, then it might be important to understand what currency is this or even make it possible for people to change the currency. So to say, show me US dollars or euros or something. And also thinking about this, so if you are seeing the currency and you see it's IDR or rupiah, then people might think I cannot buy this from somewhere else in the world because you're not mentioning it here. You're mentioning it later on the product detail pages. But I would just say something, maybe use your header of your page for this and just say worldwide delivery or wherever you deliver. So just mention this. Okay, clicking on the product detail page. Also, this one is a pretty long example. So the next ones will be way quicker, but I just found a lot of things to say for this page. I hope that's okay. And I think it's applicable to many websites if you're in e-commerce or somewhere. Um, yeah, so this one, talking about the images again. So again, here you have a lot of images where you see uh, the, uh, the swimsuit with the thing up, with the thing down, and sitting and standing, but still not from the back and not from the side. And I think that's important because people want to know how does it look completely and not only from the front. And so what you can maybe do is either have some sort of, uh, either just put the pictures there from the different angles or even uh, have some sort of 360 degree thing where people can just move the person, but that's pretty expensive to produce. Or you can just have like a review video or something. Just if you give the, um, the bikini or the, how are these called, the one piece thing, um, if you give it to someone, maybe uh, as a gift or something, say, hey, we would give this to you if you want to record a review where you just uh, talk about the material, the quality, show how it looks, blah, 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 and then maybe they are willing to help. And this is super nice for, so for social proof as well, so that people understand this is actually good quality because people um, prove it. Um, also, what I would do when you have pictures, I would show some macro shots, so just some very zoomed in details where you show the fabric or something, or so if they have some details, like, uh, I mean, this one, I don't know, you can show this part where it's white, like how it's uh, fabricated and stuff like this. Then looking to the right side, you have the size here, and size doesn't really tell you anything if you don't know the size of the model or if you don't know uh, the, the measurements of the clothes that you sell. So what I really like in online shops, if you, bear, uh, if you buy clothes or shoes or something, or rather clothes, then you could just add a line of text somewhere saying uh, something like, Jane uh, is 168 centimeters tall and wears an M so that people could kind of understand, okay, how would it look on me because I know my size, what size do I have to order because right now it doesn't tell you anything. And I would also have something like a sizing table where you can see uh, XSS, ML, XL, XXL, blah, blah, blah. Um, how are the measurements of these things? I know, I think for, for swimwear it might be kind of uh, forgiving because it's very stretchy, but I would still add it. Okay, then um, saying something about availability. So right now you're just saying add to cart or buy it now because it's available, but people don't necessarily know. Only if you click here and you say I want it in large and it's not available, then you see it's sold out. This, by the way, if you have something that is sold out, just add something where people can leave their email to get a, 
uh, like a notification when it's available again. So you can build your email list by doing this and also you can increase your sales obviously. Um, but I would also, if something is available, just add some line here saying uh, available right now or available now or immediately or however you say this in English. Um, okay, then you have the product description. I think it's kind of cool to just have a list of things that you say because it's very easy to consume, very easy to read, and it's just the deed or the, the facts that you want to have about the product. So this is nice, but I would also maybe add some emotional copy there where you just say something about um, how it looks, how people, I, I don't know, I don't want to sound sexist, so I will not give an example, but just have some emotional copy uh, explaining how nice the product is, where you can just say something about it. Or maybe even talk about details that it has and blah, blah, blah. Uh, then we have the shipping part here. I was pretty confused when I looked at the shipping. So first of all, you say uh, receiving time equals processing time plus shipping time, but I have no idea what your processing time is. Does it mean you first have to fabricate it? You have to create it first? How long does that take? Like five weeks? Or what is processing time? Uh, it's like uh, preparing. Preparing of what? Like uh, from the shop, and we have to, yeah, preparing the packaging, etc. So you just put it in a box, and yeah. I'm I would leave this out. I wouldn't talk about it. I would just say it's in available immediately, and just do it the same day when people order or within 24 hours. Because processing time is a big question mark for me. I have no idea what this means, and for me it sounds like it takes years to arrive. That's maybe my subjective opinion, but for me it sounds shady, so I would just leave it away. Um, or maybe say two to four business days delivery time, so you're safe. Um, also, when you're saying international shipping, is it actual worldwide? So you ship in every country in the world. That's cool, you should say it, but you don't. So right now, international for me sounds like, okay, you sent to many countries, but I'm not sure if you sent to my country. So I would just say worldwide shipping, yeah, and that's and you're done. Du -du 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 -du. Uh, then when you have this uh, shipping information here, you say two to three business days, five to 15 business days. If you click here on the shipping, uh, you suddenly have different numbers. So that's just something where you probably forgot to edit the, the text on the page. So I would just fix this. Um, mm -hmm -hmm -hmm. Then uh, if you scroll down on the page, you see nothing basically so I think you're missing reviews ratings of your products because people will usually be less likely or much less likely to buy if there are no ratings because they don't want to be the first person trying it and they kind of want to have the reassurance that someone says this is a good product or the size is actually what the size says on the website and so on so maybe uh, you can try to get more reviews or to get uh, or to even get reviews for your product. So you could do it because you're sending it by uh, by mail, so it could be kind of easy to just uh, maybe add a handwritten card in there. It doesn't have to be handwritten, but print it so it looks handwritten and just say something uh, uh, packed with love by, uh, what was your name, Af Af Afri? Afri? No, okay. And packed with love by Afri, and uh, if you're happy, we would love you for giving us a rating here, have a link on there, and so maybe you get more product reviews which is very important for online shopping. Okay, clicking on Add to Cart. Uh, if you change your quantity here, so I change it from one to three. Uh, wait, I have to reproduce this. Uh, I think if I click Checkout now and it's not available three times, I hope I come to the right page. Yeah, so what happens here is uh, you're it says out of stock because you don't have three items available, so it got changed back to one from three, but the price didn't update. So now you could feel like, uh, oh, so this one piece costs me 1.7 million, but it's actually only 600,000 or something like this. And um, I know this is not your fault. This is the shop software that does this, I guess, um, but this is pretty terrible if you're ordering something. So yeah, I would maybe, just open a support ticket and tell them, hey, this happens. I actually have a screenshot of this if you need one. Um, okay, now we're using the search. I will not go to the checkout really because it's, I think it's shopware or something. Yeah, so you, you can change the checkout anyway, so I won't talk about it. Um, but if we go to the search and we just search for, uh, I'm always super scared, by the way, when I have these suggests from my last searches. <laughs> um, <laughs> 
I'm not going back, I didn't read it. Uh, so you search for bikini, and what happens is you get four results. One of them is about us, which shouldn't be in the search results because that's irrelevant because people will search for products there. And you get three bikinis, but you have more than three bikinis. So I, th I don't know what's the reason for this, but I guess you just added not enough tags or something or keywords for your products when you put them in your website. So you should just, so the search function actually you uh, works, you should just add a lot of keywords and even put maybe typo errors in there. Like, uh, I don't know, when people write one piece in one word or in two words and so on. Um, okay, almost done with this one. Uh, clicking on the About Us page. Uh, first of all, this is a bit problematic in terms of readability. So for me, when you have a text that is a bit longer and it's centered, it's really hard to read because it's very hard for, for the eye to jump from here to the next line because it's hard to see uh, where was I. So it's just a lot of cognitive effort, which makes people not read it usually. So they'll just be like, uh, looks complicated. I will just, uh, yeah, just ignore it. Uh, also, be careful when you use something like this, like these uh, handwriting fonts or something. I think this one is still okay, but it's still kind of hard to read. So maybe find a font that is a bit uh, more readable. And um, also what I would do, I will talk about this a few more times today and also the last times when I was here, uh, you should use bold words to direct the attention. So if you have just a huge paragraph of text or a huge block of text, people will randomly look somewhere if you don't control where they look. So you could just put some words bold so that people will actually look in this direction. I have an example that I show every time. Do you want to see it where you can see how this works? Okay, I'm bored by it, but it's important. Um, okay, so you see nothing and that's how it's supposed to be. So I will show you two texts for 500 milliseconds and you just remember the word that you saw or the two words that you saw. Starting now, the second one, Okay, these are the two texts, and for the first one, I will just reveal it instantly so we don't lose so much time. Um, for the first one, you probably saw anything, and for the second one, you probably saw I can't think of or something of this. Who agrees? Who disagrees? Who didn't get the game or doesn't want to play? Okay, okay, but yeah, so that's basically how it works, and the reason for this is this attention curve, so when you have a line of text or even a paragraph of text, the attention goes th follows this rule. So the first word always has the most attention. So you should put your, oh my God, that's by the way, the wrong example. What am I talking about? Um, this is more for word order. The next example is for making words bold. So this one was about how to structure your sentences. So put most important words in the beginning of your text and so on. Um, now the example that I want to show you, sorry for the confusion. So same game as before, please look. Okay, so you probably saw painting as a hobby, who agrees? Uh, or unlimited, who saw mix up a little? Okay, a few, and who saw something else that is not yellow? Okay, cool, so you see it kind of works. And you can try this yourself by being this dog, so you just squint your eyes, and if you look at something, it doesn't have to be a text, can be anything, can be a whole website, can be a layout, can be a room of people, can be anything. If you squint your eyes, the things that kind of jump out or pop out or uh, get your attention are usually the things that people see first when they look at something. Okay. Um, da -da 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 -da. Okay, also, I mean, talking about readability, okay, but also your content uh, is a bit weird. No, I'm sorry for saying this, but uh, I mean, you can read it while I'm talking. Uh, but so your content sounds a bit like, what do you want? what do you want to tell me? I don't really get it. I don't understand. And it's not really about us. I mean, you're saying some things about, um, I mean, you're based in Bali, blah, 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 but it's all kind of hidden in all of these texts that you have there. And this might be a language barrier, I don't know. Um, however, your About Us page, first of all, shouldn't be about you, but very much about the client. So everything you say there should kind of be targeted at um, why should someone buy our products or why should someone like our brand? And you should say something or what, or parts of content that I would have on my about page is something like a team photo because I mean you're uh, you're here so you probably do you have a team or is it just you you okay and me and myself okay but then just take a selfie or something just to show some authenticity so that people see oh there's actually a person behind it it's not just some weird drop shitting person that tries to scam me or something sorry for all the drop shippers um, 
Also, I would say something about your stores, because you have five stores, I think, here in Bali. And this is a very, very nice thing to say. So people, uh, it adds credibility, and maybe you can add photos of them, so people can see, oh, this is actually a brand where I can even try them on. Um, I would talk about the founder, founders or founder, maybe say, what's your background? Uh, why did you start this? Just to have some emotional parts in there. Maybe talk about your mission, like what do you, why did you start all of this? What do you want to achieve with it? Um, talk about your fabrication, where where are the pieces built? Like how are they built? Um, just to add trust, if it's something you wanna mention. If it's just China, I wouldn't mention it. Um, and yeah, I would maybe add some local context, like if you have some. So if you're talking about um, why are we in Changu? Why are we in Bali? Uh, what are the uh, I don't know, the the nice reasons behind this, if there are any. So just stuff like this I would put on my About Us page. And again, everything focused on customer benefits. So always write it in a way that people think, oh, that's cool, that's cool, that's nice, that's nice, I will buy. Okay, um, almost done, last three small things. Uh, if I go to the home page again, and I scroll down, uh, you have some events here that are in the past. So it says our upcoming event and um, it's just from December 2019, so I would just remove it or add a future date, or even automate it. If it happens regularly, just say something like, either automate the date or just say something like every Saturday of the week. Um, then you have your newsletter down here, and you just say newsletter, email address, subscribe. This is very, I wouldn't do it, because newsletter is a very negative word usually. It just means you're getting a lot of emails that you're not really interested in that spam your mailbox or, or your inbox, and um, I would just maybe find a different title where you say something like uh, get updates on new products, sales, blah, blah, blah. So don't use the word newsletter. And then maybe also don't use the word subscribe because it sounds kind of meh. It's, it's not a nice word. So maybe just say something like, yes, I'm in, or whatever. You need a microphone. For the events, if they already happened and they were interesting and you want them on your site, how would you handle putting up, let's say, past events somehow on the site? Um, if it's important to show like past events, then I would maybe have a new item in my navigation. It doesn't have to be the top navigation. It can be footer navigation where you say something like um, about our company and then have a sub item there, like, like here. So you say visit our stores is the headline, then you have different things that you can click and just have another column that says uh, about our company or about us and then just have uh, past events or gallery or something where you can put this. Okay, and last thing for this page, you have your social icons here and I think social media might be kind of important for you, um, but you give no reasons to follow. So right now you just show the Facebook logo, the Instagram logo, but you should again, like with the newsletter, just give people reasons to click on there, so say something like what to expect on these pages, and then people might be more likely to click it. Or for Instagram, you can even use some sort of widget where you just show your latest posts and people can click it and then they get to your Instagram profile. Okay, that was it. I hope there was something in there. The next one, or, or should we do an applause for being so brave? <laughs> Where's my mouse? Oh, yeah. ah. um, <laughs> the next one is Dojo. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so because Dojo is hosting a lot of events, as you all might have heard, and this is a pretty short one because it's just one single page for one public speaking event, um, which, by the way, happens uh, sh soon. I don't know when. When does it happen? Okay. <laughs> what? See, that's a problem with the page. Where? Oh, here. Okay. So it's happening soon, and I think you still have five slots left for it. But yet, I mean, I'm not promoting it really. But <laughs> just while I'm talking, uh, just have in mind this is actually available. Um, this is not the reason I took this, by the way. Okay. So first of all, um, I will start with the hero shot again. So the main image of the page um, for me. I mean, this might be some 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 uh, very important thing from the workshop because this sim the sign with your hand is not only in your hero shot, but it's also like here and here. S it seems to be really important to do this. <laughs> so I would just speak like this now. 
Um, for me, it looks like a very intimidating pose. It sounds like, shut the fuck up, like, I'm talking right now. Or, or like Trump would say, you're not supposed to do that. So um, I think the image is negative. I wouldn't uh, use an image like this. And you have many pictures that are nice. So I don't know, who am I talking? Am I talking to your auntie? Uh, to me. Yeah. Okay, all right. Okay, and um, yeah, so I would just change the picture maybe to something more positive. Or is it just me who, who thinks this is a nice picture? Who thinks it's shit? <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> um, okay, then uh, you are uh, talking about when the early bird starts on fifth of he of January. It's actually al uh, already over. I think I think it ended yeah, it's yesterday. Over, yeah. And so all of these things, I would automate them if possible, in any way, because you don't want to look in your pages every day and be like, oh, is this date already over, or is this in the future? So it's kind of annoying, and I, I, I know why this happens, so it's, I guess it would happen to everyone, but it's bad if you look at this page and then you're promoting the early bird, but it's not even available anymore. So that's kind of bad user experience. Um, also, if you have an early bird running, you could say about uh, something about when does it end or how many tickets are available in the early bird and uh, create some kind of scarcity so that people yeah. are like, oh, I have to buy right now or at least be fast. Then what I'm missing, so you're, you're starting right now with the uh, complete agenda or the complete description of day one. For me, what's missing is kind of like an introduction or like a quick overview where you're saying something about um, what will you take away from this? Because you only have the headline right now. And this headline is kind of okay. I mean, it's, it's a good headline because it gets very much to the point. So it explains um, what people can expect there, but still the details are missing. So what will you actually right. learn? And I would just add some, I don't know, a small part maybe here above the description of day one where you say something about this is what you learn, da, 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 and so on. And also I would say something about who should attend. You're saying this later on this page somewhere, like here, who is it for? Um, but I think it's extremely important before people even start to read all the details to understand, okay, this is actually something that is for me. And you're only talking about, um, yeah, like uh, professions. So who is it for professions? But you should also talk about the uh, experience level in public speaking. So because, for example, I, I never took a course on public speaking, but I do it a lot. And I think I don't need a course, but maybe I need one. So. I think um, that would be a very important thing so people can decide, is this actually for me or not? Because me being entitled, uh, mm -hmm. I would just say, oh, I don't need this, but maybe I do, but I don't know. Right. Um, <laughs> then you have the content of day one and two. So I would just scroll over this very quickly. So you have day one, description, pictures, more description, who's it for, topics covered. And then you have day two, which is description, and that's it. So the two days are not built in the same way, so it's hard to compare because people can actually buy a ticket for only one of those two days. Yes. And uh, so you should have a very, very same build of the content that you have for the two days so people can decide, will I uh, attend both days or only one day? And I think day one is much, much more love went into it when writing it. Um, okay, also what I said earlier, so help people skim the website. So when they come, they might just fly over the copy and not read everything in detail in the first moment. So just use bold words, add lists, like bullet lists to your content, add pictures or something so that people, uh, yeah, that the text looks more interesting to read. Then you have a video here, down there. Um, da 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 da. Uh, for every video that you have, I would add some sort of either a starting screen. I mean, you have a starting screen for this video, yep. but this, uh, the starting screen just tells people the same that they've already read as the headline of the page. So I would rather have some headline or like either a starting screen or a headline above the video uh, that tells people something like uh, learn in 70 seconds uh, why this workshop is invaluable for everyone speaking in front of audiences or something that people actually get a reason to watch it because otherwise I would just be like, I don't care, I don't, I don't watch it. And also uh, when you watch the video and you go to the end, this is another scary moment for me, uh, you get video recommendations based on your previous <laughs> surfing behavior. Okay, no, that's, that's pretty much fine. Um, so you don't want this because you don't want people to leave your site. Because if I'm like, oh, it's Davey 504 and I click this and suddenly I go to YouTube and I leave your site, that's not nice. But you can actually, um, 
wait a second. Uh, you can actually remove these recommendations. When you embed the video from YouTube, you can just disable the checkbox or uh, you can just, it's just one small part of your YouTube right. video URL. Okay. Uh, then uh, if you scroll down here, you have um, the professional mentor. Is that the person hosting the workshop or uh, is it just a professional mentor? The coach. So it's the one who is here that is who's running yeah, the thing. Who is gonna coach yeah, the class I think yeah, that doesn't really come clear to me. So right. for me, it's just like oh, it's a professional mentor. Maybe he's here for ten minutes just to say hi or to introduce mm -hmm. everyone. But it doesn't sound like this is actually the person you will spend two days with. So I would maybe have a different headline here, not saying professional mentor, but saying uh, you're a workshop host yeah, or something. I see, yeah. um, then you have a testimonial by Nikki, and uh, is he here? No. Oh, of course. Um, yeah, and first of all, I would maybe add more testimonials because having one is nice, having more is kind of nicer. I wouldn't have too many, but just add some more for credibility because people who are here know, oh, Nikki is probably friends with Upton, so it's not very trustworthy, although it might be a real comment, but I would just add some different ones just to increase the credibility and also maybe to uh, add more content that tells people how nice the workshop is. And this testimony is actually really great. So it's a nice thing that he says, but for me it's, I don't get it or I don't take it because they might be friends. So uh, just have something like, like a person that is not very involved in all of these people. And last thing, because it's a short one, um, your page speed is quite slow. So I was seeing this because you have these uh, fonts that you use. So the special font from Dojo that is used in the headline and in all of these headlines. And when you come with a slow connection, you just have Times New Roman, like a, some serif font, yeah, and okay. uh, this looks kind of weird. So what I would do for every page in this world, not only for this one, but you can, if you use Chrome, you can just right click and go on inspect, and then click on audits here. And this is Google Lighthouse, so it's basically what Google Page Speed is, or Google Page Speed Insights, if you've heard of this, but it's more detailed, so it gives you more information. And you can just say, what device am I on? What do I want to measure? So blah, 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 all sorts of things. And um, this is now a simulated slow 4G uh, connection, which might be very, very possible to happen because you don't always have perfect internet. And then you just click Run Audits, and then it loads the page again, and uh, it gives you, or it, it runs through it. Now you will also see the weird effect with the, oh no, you don't, must be caching. Um, but yesterday when I tried, you had this weird font in the first moment, and then in the end it shows you a big report of all the things you should fix to increase the page or the performance of your page. I would just let this run in the background while I'm giving this to you. So that comes with uh, all Google Chrome, the audit? Yeah, it's just right. in Google Chrome. You right. just right-click yeah. inspect audits and it's there okay. on every computer. Thanks. Yeah, I think that is this clear storage thing that I have at the bottom, but I don't know. Yeah, maybe you should rather do it in incognito mode where you don't have caching anyway, and then, yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, okay, so now when you're done, you see your performance value, 9 of 100. This differs, like it's not every day the same, but um, yeah, it's just a number. And then you see, if you scroll down, all of these things that you can, or the problems that you see, and you can click all of them and uh, then see what you can do to improve these things. And the great thing is you don't have to do this for every page, but most of these things affect every page on your website. So you do it once and then you're pretty much set for every page that you have. Okay, next uh, is, I think it's German, Stefan. Is Stefan here? No? Stefan! No. Okay, then we'll skip this for now, because, no. Um, okay, I will go to, to Jacqueline. I know, I know. Yeah, I'm, I'm going back. I was just on the, sorry, internet. No, no, no. <laughs> Sorry, that was market dot, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. <coughs> also, uh, applause for Dojo. <laughs> um, okay, so this is, uh, is it Jacqueline, Jacqueline? Jackie. 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 Okay, I'll stick to that. 
Um, are you German? Yeah. Okay, such a German name. Okay, uh, or actu actually French, I think. Um, okay, so uh, this page, first of all, I said it to you earlier. So uh, um, it was hard to find things on this page because this was a page that was pretty, pretty well done. So uh, that's cool and that's very rare. I don't see this usually. And normally every website is like, <coughs> but this one is really nice. And um, still I have some things to say, but I will also say some things in the end. What can you do when your website is looking fine and you don't really know how to optimize it? But you always can. So um, starting with this, uh, first of all, you're saying therapy doesn't have to be expensive, blah, blah, blah. What is therapy? So it kind of depends on where people or how people come to your page. Uh, I guess they had some search term or something, or they heard of someone that they should go to this page, like a referral. But still therapy can be everything it can be aroma therapy so um yeah but i guess it's like uh, i don't what's the english word for this like psychic Psy psychotherapy but a lot of people don't know that it's psychotherapy okay and it's also maybe a negative word which yeah. sounds like oh i'm 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 a victim or something yeah. if they read it so yeah maybe maybe you can find something else um Maybe don't use the word therapy there, but maybe use something like um, getting help or I don't know, just some wording that, I mean, therapy for me in the first moment, it was kind of like, I can guess what it is, but I'm not entirely sure what it is. Um, then also you're offering your services only in Canada, as I found out yeah. during going through all of this. Um, maybe you can say this very early because right now you can't really see it. So it's not visible, it's just visible at some point, but people might come to your page from Canada or from outside of Canada, but they don't know, can I actually use the service where I am? Uh, so maybe you can add something to your logo, like a small claim where you say uh, something like um, online therapy for Canada or something like this. So just so people understand. Um, then, yeah, you said the buttons are not working yet because this is not the, yeah, it's not the live version. So um, let's ignore this one for now. But if you had this button, it would probably lead you to get started. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Uh, then you have some trust elements here. So you're saying something about how many people have used your service um, and so on and so on. And I think these things are extremely important. So people need to see them, but not everyone comes to your homepage. So I would for this case, I would just use your header of your page and just maybe make the navigation a bit more narrow and um, create space or move the navigation a bit down and create space for these things, for these three things that you say there and just add them in your header so it's visible on every page where people land, no matter where they land, uh, just to build trust and make people uh, understand that other people are using this as well. Um, okay, then you have some media logos down here and whenever you have these logo walls or these, uh, yeah, these, these logos, you know what I mean, um, then I would also add some context. So right now it could be something like, uh, are that your clients? Are you helping these companies? Or did they talk about you? Or what's the thing? So I would just add a small headline just so people understand what about this. And you can also write this headline in a way that is very positive. So don't just say something like as seen on, which is what most companies do, but say maybe something like uh, uh, these uh, globally recognized uh, news websites or magazines uh, mentioned our brand in the most positive way. I have no idea, but something like this. Um, <laughs> okay, then scrolling down. So again, this page is great. I don't uh, have a lot of things to say, so I will also not go through all of this content. But if you want inspiration, just go to the website yourself, which is not live yet, so don't. Okay, cool. Maybe, yeah, just put it in the, uh, you can put it in this event, in the discussion, in case people are interested. Um, so yeah, you have these one, two, three steps, how to use all of this or how, how all of this works. And for me, it's great to have this, uh, like showing the process, how everything works, but the screenshots that you use look like they are actually elements on this page that I can interact with because the screenshot quality is too good. So, um, yeah, so if you look at this part, it could be like, eh, maybe not here because the text is very small, but definitely if you go here, you can be like, oh, book a session, and then it doesn't work, it's broken. What a, what a terrible company. <laughs> so um, maybe, try to find a different display for the screenshots because it's important to show these things, but maybe have something like, 
I don't know, like the typical MacBook where you just have it on the screen so people know it's not actually part of this page or any way just to solve this. Very important thing and something that many, many people do, which is really terrible, um, is you're using stock photography as testimonials or as uh, stuff that you're showing. And which is also or always very funny is to just go to Google, screenshot this, do a Google image search for the person and see, oh, she's working for two million companies. What, what a talent. And um, yeah, this is extremely trust breaking. So if you see something like this or if I see something like this, I will immediately leave your website and say you're bullshitting people. So I'm not saying you do, but people might think you do. Sorry, I can move my mouse. Um, yeah, so just use real pictures and you have real pictures, I guess, and you just need to find someone who allows you to use it or just remove it if you can't. Um, da -da 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 -da. Okay, then you have some testimonials at the bottom and what I like to test or what is always a great test to do if you do A-B testing, uh, you can just try putting the testimonials that you have further to the top of the page because many times this increases conversions. My most extreme test for this was 25% uh, more conversions just by putting the testimonials from the bottom to the top of the page. So this can be extremely important, but just test it. Don't just do it, just run an A-B test or something. Um, okay, then... Da -da -da -da. Okay, now the rest of the comments I had was about stuff not working, but again, so we know how this happens. Uh, clicking on get started. So you can click started every time while you're on your page because it's part of the navigation and you don't know what people saw before. So you don't know, did they understand everything? Did they read everything? Or did they just click there instantly? And then they're missing information. So if they don't have all of it in their head or in their memory, which they won't because they can't memorize the whole website, uh, you kind of need to state your top USPs or your top arguments to work with you on in this part of the page. So just have sign up or maybe maybe have a, a more comprehensive headline that says a bit more of what to expect, like sign up to <laughs> whatever people want from you. And um, yeah, just state your top USPs at the top. And then also what you need to do is uh, you need to explain to people is creating the account free because your service costs money, but I guess setting up the account is free. Um, also your first session is free. Maybe that's something that you could mention here just to uh, lower the barrier of people signing up. And extremely important is to say, are there any obligations by signing up? Because maybe people just want to take a look. Maybe they just want to see how it is. Maybe they just want to have their first free session, but they don't want to buy your product yet. So you might want to say something about there are no obligations, the first session is free, if you don't like it, you're done, and so on. And uh, what I found entertaining is custom gender. Is that is that a thing? In Canada, yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, it's like um, for most products, when it's like medical tests, mm -hmm. you want to leave some layers of differences in like pretty minimal. Okay. Yeah, like yeah. yeah, we use diverse. Mm -hmm. I just didn't know custom for it, so I thought like, I'm um, okay. Not, not talking about this. Um, all right. Uh, last thing before saying a few things about what you can do to optimize a website in general. Uh, so you have business in your navigation. And for me, business doesn't really tell me what I find behind this. So it could be like the about you, like about your company. But it could also be uh, for practitioners who want to work with you. But actually, it's for companies using your service for their employees. So maybe a word that describes this better is businesses. At least then you, you cut out all the, no, I have no idea what you cut out, but I think businesses is kind of more explanatory for this, like it's for companies, or maybe you say for companies even, or for businesses. For, for business. Yeah, yeah, that's maybe better. Um, yeah, because business just doesn't explain it. Okay, and uh, yeah, last thing about your buttons, I'm still saying it, but uh, if you hover them right now, I guess it's because they're not linked, but you need to have the pointer finger and uh, you should give a visual feedback when people hover it, just say no, or they, they are more likely to click it. Okay, that's it. Applause. Thank you. Okay. I'm almost on time. Uh, so I would just, if uh, Stefan uh, doesn't come, I would just not use the website just to make a statement of you have to be here if you sign up for it. Um, the last one for now is Sebastian. Are you here now? Yes. Okay. 
uh, which is an agent, or I, I won't say what it is, oops. Hello, hello. Oh my God, I, I shouldn't have Excuse said this because uh, that was actually one of my questions. Okay, um, going to this page, uh, first of all, you have your cookie notice at the top. Um, I would maybe make it a bit smaller. I know, I mean, people have to have it on their websites actually these days. Actually, it is by the 1st of January, you have to put it as a full overlay and you have to click all the different things if you are registered in Germany. So that is even really? wrong by GDPR. Oh, I hate Germany, man. So everyone who has okay. anything registered in Europe, you have to do it. Okay. Otherwise, they can really F you somewhere. That's good to know. I didn't know that you have to put it there. Uh, that sucks, but okay. Um, let's hope people get used to it soon. Uh, okay, however, so you have this note there and then um, if I click decline, so I don't want any cookies, you're saying that... Uh, if you decline, your information won't be tracked when you visit the website. A single cookie will be used in your browser to remember your preference not to be tracked. If you click decline, you have four cookies. If you then... Um, I tried this earlier. I can uh, show it again, but I don't want to. Uh, if you then have this chat thing and you open it and close it, it also stores cookies. So um, right now I have six cookies, although I click decline on your page. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, thank you. Okay. Um, Okay, but that's just uh, some side note. So about the page itself, uh, you see it right now, so uh, yeah, you can look at it. And my question would be, just randomly in the room, just, just scream your answer, what is the page about? Okay. Yeah. It's an agency, correct. It's, it's kind of an agency. However, I had the same feeling. So when I, when I saw, if I see this video in the background, for me it's like, oh, you're doing web hosting or doing some server stuff or like IT farms or rendering farms. I have no idea. Um, but it's not what you do. So for me, I think it's a problem for one thing with your background video that you have. Oh, it's, it's filmed. You don't have to film. We have it online. It's on YouTube, but it's okay. Um, so yeah, the video is kind of wrong. It's, it's kind of leading people in the wrong direction. And then also your headline doesn't tell what you do. So hire a specialist to get the job done can be everything. That can be uh, like plastic surgery. That's true. Um, okay, so I think in general, whenever you have a headline, it needs to have like two things that it explains. Yes, say it. Like. I'm running this stuff for four years, and this is the hardest thing to find out. To be honest, like we had so many different headlines, we had so many different things, and then when people come to us and say, oh, you're an agency, oh, I don't want to work with you, but we are not mm. a traditional agency, so there is actually not really a word out there. So even if we say we're an uh, Avantage collective, people are like, what the F are you? Mm -hmm. I don't get it, you know? So that's yeah. why this, thank you again, like I really know, and mm -hmm. I we don't have a solution for that right now. That's this. why you're here. So, um, so any headline, at least on a home page, but actually any headline has to explain what is the page about and how is it good for people. That's kind of the two things that it has to explain. And you shouldn't talk about, or you can, but you shouldn't really talk about what you do, but what the client gets. So, and I think that's kind of the solution here. So you could just, still not a copywriter, but you could, you should say something about, um, like like what people get from you. I'm, I'm talking bullshit right now, but let's talk about this later. But in general, your headline should be out of the customer's perspective. Like, um, get, huh? Yeah, that's the thing, they don't hire, I mean, they do hire people for unique skills, but it's actually sending people to help companies achieve their IT projects or uh, finish their IT projects. However, we'll talk about it later. Um, Okay, also when you have a headline, you can it helps sometimes because uh, headlines shouldn't be too long because then it's like a paragraph and people might not read everything. So you can add something like a subheadline. So you can maybe uh, put a combination there of emotional and explanatory. So maybe have an emotional headline that's uh, maybe triggering the pain points that people have. So something like um, not getting your IT project done on time. Or is it actually IT project or is it just building websites and apps? That's the thing, you know, we do project work, we recruit freelancers, we recruit full-time employees, and we do IT consulting. How do I put all of these four things which are in so different many directions? It's four words. So huh? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, 
however, still, you could have something emotional. Maybe you can talk about IT projects, whatever, um, and then maybe have an explanatory subheadline where you say, how do you solve this problem or something like this. Um, okay, another question for everyone. How do I navigate this page? Oh, yeah, yeah, actually. So yeah, I thought scrolling down is the way. I was a bit missing the menu uh, because the menu icon that you have here, uh, who didn't see it before? Um, so yeah, it's a very, I think it, it's, two, it's two problems with the menu icon. So first of all, the problem is it's an icon. So you use the burger icon that you would use on a mobile screen and people might know it on a mobile screen, at least these days they should know it because so many websites use it. However, on desktop it's very uncommon, so you could just put your navigation there. It's two words, it's not too much, even if it's four words or something, it can still fit in the top part of your page, and the positioning is very uncommon. So usually menu is top right, top left, and you have it right center or right middle of the page. So I think people would just ignore it or not see it or just I don't know. I mean, yeah, they would probably try to scroll, but then you could still be like, where do I go with this? Is this a one pager or do you have sub pages or whatever? And I know you link to them from these places, but I would still just put your menu in the top for people who want to go there quickly. I agree. And that's why I'm recording this to send it to my designer. Thank you. Okay. Hello, designer. Okay. Um, then scrolling down a bit, uh, you have the logo wall. So basically what I said, to Jackie a second ago. So if you have a logo wall, just add context, say, what are these? And you, I mean, it's your customers, I would guess. So you can say something like, uh, we helped 500, which is probably not true. We have helped X uh, amount of companies uh, achieving their IT projects on time, blah, blah, blah. So just add some value in there. If you write a headline for these things, just put something in there that makes people understand, oh, this is actually something I want too. Also, uh, you have a visual feedback here. So if I move the mouse over this one, for example, it gets green. If you have no link behind this, don't give any visual feedback because people might think it's clickable. They might oh, click and then rage clicking happens. So you have, if you do mouse tracking, it's actually a thing where people are like click, 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 but nothing happens. And there you can see frustration. And um, that shouldn't happen, so just either don't give visual feedback or give them to all of the logos that you have there and then link them to your references page or something. Du -du 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 -du. Uh, scrolling a bit further, so we have this services part here. And I think this is basically the same problem that you have with your headline. You don't really know how to say what you offer. Um, so here, even there, because you, you use more text for this part, but I found it very hard to differentiate between these two. So I was like, uh, like wh where do I go now? I mean, I could just send a contact form, but if I'm insecure on your page, I wouldn't send a contact form. So I kind of need to know this, this, this are the things that you do. I'm completely with you. That's nice. And um, so what I would do in this case, you should uh, help people decide in any way that is simpler than what you do right now. Because right now, both things kind of sound the same. Like, I mean, there are differences, but it's, it sounds like it's pretty much the same thing that you do. And um, maybe you can do something like either or, because right now you have one, two, which is a list of things. Um, so I would rather have it right and left next to each other. Yes? Would you go like in configurator? So basically, the b you start mm. at the beginning, you say like, you are da -da -da looking for da -da -da. No, okay. but I have it. So I would just do something like either or. So just have two columns and just say, so f basically the first thing that you have there is we execute the project for you. And the second thing that you have there is we temporarily uh, complete your in-house team with specialists. So these are as, as, as much as I, or as far as I figured out, these are the two things that you do. So I would just have two columns where you uh, say, do you want this or that? So then it's maybe easier for people to process all of this. And also maybe I wouldn't use the word freelancers because um, I think specialist is a nicer word because freelancer uh, might have a bitter taste to some people because um, me, I had an agency and for me, freelancers are shit. So I mean, no, freelancers are nice people, but it's it can be very frustrating to work with freelancers because they can just disappear during a project. They don't have to stick to your deadlines by law 
and everything, so it's uh, it can be difficult. And I think working or dealing with the freelancers is your job, but it's not the client's job exactly. because they get specialists from you. So you should just uh, not use the word freelancers because that's your part, but not the client's part. And you don't want to give them that impression. So maybe, uh, yeah, don't say freelancers, but uh, just. I don't know, just say some, I, I just wrote down a few things, just something like highly trained specialists, blah, blah, blah. Huh? Consultants. Consultants is maybe not the right thing because they actually program code. So, but whatever, it's it's your business in the end. But I mean, you, you have to figure the right wordings out. This is just some ideas. And um, so I think also if you say the word freelancers, it kind of sounds like you have to pay extra for people because you are the uh, the party referring the freelancers so you get your cut of the money, uh, but then I could just look for the freelancers myself. That's kind of how, how um, getting freelancers through another person looks for me or sounds for me. So it's a bit misleading, I would say. Um, yeah, and also if you don't use the word freelancers, but you use the word trained specialists or whatever, you can say uh, maybe a few benefits why people should even consider using your company to get them. So stuff like uh, you maybe have a lower cost throughout the year because you don't have to employ them or anything, it wasn't me. Um, or uh, you can say, yeah, stuff like uh, you don't have to manage them, you don't have to train them, we do all the stuff, you just get the work done and so on. Okay, scrolling a bit further, uh, we have, just getting ready for karaoke here, um, you have this freelancer sourcing or project work, so right now, these are, again, the two things that you offer. So maybe you can combine this with the thing I said earlier. If you have the two columns, just link further from there. Maybe also add the copy that you have here to these two columns. So yeah, just have it easier. Have just one element where you differentiate between the two parts of your page. And then you should have different subpages because right now you just have one references page. And if you click there, so it can be for your freelancer sourcing or for your project work. And if you click it, you just get random or a random list of things, one second, uh, where yeah, people can't really be like, oh, I wanted this or I wanted that, but they, it's, it's impossible to figure it out without reading the whole copy, but no one will. Yes, that should have been a quick win, but my question is, would you have like a menu on the top where people could choose, like so directly showing either freelance work or project work on the same page? Or would you, as of SEO reasons, just link to the subpage for I it? Or no, I would have two different subpages, not for SEO reasons, but actually for human reasons, because it's easier to figure out where you want to go. Otherwise, people have to learn how to use your page, how to filter, and blah, blah, blah. That's unnecessary. And also, you can focus the whole content on your page, not only about the product uh, projects or references that you have, but you can actually have a short introduction where you say why you're nice for this, what you do, what to expect, blah, 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 and here are the projects that you've done. <coughs> okay, then going back to the home page. <laughs> so you have this work process thingy, and um, in general, it's really nice to show the work process because people have this question anyway, and it's kind of important to show people how the work happens before they contact you because they want to be sure, okay, this is actually what we're looking for. However, uh, I think you should add some more information to this or be a bit more specific. So right now, the first one, you say simply book a time slot and we will be in touch. My question would be, how do I book the time slot? Because if I go down on your page, uh, further down to the end of your page, um, I have this form, but I cannot book the time slot, but you said it's the first step. So that's kind of meh for me. So if you have the first step of the process, you could maybe just say something uh, like, um, contact us now and we will find a time slot with you or something like this, and then just let people scroll down. Then in the second one, you say specialist. So it's singular, so, <coughs> so you're always, but you can get multiple, right? Yeah, so. I just saw it too. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah so use plural. Um, also in the subtext that you have here, so it's also singular. And no, 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 no. then you're immediately starting with the execution of the project, but what's happening between that? So it's not like people will contact you, you're having a free video consultation, then you define a specialist and they get the job done, but there actually has to be more, like we will uh, talk to you in detail about all the project milestones, all the technical requirements, blah, 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 blah. 
I would add this as a step because that kind of shows your or where your expertise or your expertise 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 is. So that's missing in there. Um, okay, and then in the last point or in the second last point, you say launch of project. Seventy five percent of our projects are launched before estimated deadlines, which is cool. However, the other ones are all delayed or maybe you should also mention the other ones. So you should say that um, if they're, no, don't, don't even talk about delays, but uh, maybe say something about uh, that 100% of your product, uh, or that you stick to your deadlines 100% of the time because the client might fuck it up. Uh, but yeah, however. Okay, uh, almost last thing for today. So you have this contact form and whenever you want people to contact you and especially when you are some sort of agency or some sort of you offer a service for someone, you should show people who are you talking to. Because I think with your company it might be easy because they're probably talking to you or someone. But um, yeah, it's, it's not like you have a huge call center and you have no idea who's answering the phone or who's replying to the email. So maybe just have some column there on the left or something which also makes the form more narrow, which is nice because right now it doesn't even look like a form, so I would have it more like this. And just say something like, uh, I am, or this is Sebastian, uh, your, like your position in the company, especially when you're, whoa, especially when you are the uh, owner of the company, it's kind of nice because people know I'm immediately talking to someone that knows stuff and that can make decisions. And yeah, this is important, yes? On, I did a bunch of research on contact forms, so you can just come grab me and I can show you what I did. Yay. What? Just to let you know, this contact form in the technology we're using is a pain in the ass. And uh, I know exactly what you're talking about. Most of the things that you actually said that are all on my plate as well. But thank you very much, Anise. So yeah, far. yeah. I still have one. Um, so the last thing, it's a super small thing. That's what she said. Um, but you have this jobs page um, where you're just showing, like this is where you hire people to work with you for clients, right? And you're mentioning your price per hour. If I was a client and I have to pay you 150 per hour, but I see, oh, everyone just gets 50 to 80, I would be like, fuck you. So I would just not mention the price here because you, you show your margin to your clients, which is something you don't really want, I would say. Do you understand what I mean? I always show my margin. My margin is always 20%. Oh, so you do? I'm, I'm usually always very transparent. So I, oh okay. really, I really want the transparency here. Okay, Th I mean, then it's cool. But then say it. Then even say, uh, hey, um, or maybe even say it here, like, we are, uh, char or this is what you get. Uh, our client pays 20% on top, blah, blah, blah. So that clients don't think you're bullshitting them. That's why, the actually, if you scroll down, I mean, there was a quick win as well. Can you scroll down for the next part? Yeah, the commission part was actually meant to be in a, uh, another row, so you know ah. exactly how much p commission you make when you refer someone, or how much commission we get. So yeah. everything is then staying very okay. transparent. No, that's cool. So if you're transparent about it, then just state it or mention it, because I was a bit like, what's happening? Okay, um, that's it for you. <laughs> Applause. Um, yeah, and I will just not do the last one. We maybe we have like two minutes for questions, if there are any. Yeah, sure. Um, because normally I'm I'm very slow here. This isn't quite a question, but a suggestion on that last point. Um, I actually think it's a great differentiator that you're in IT and are very transparent. That's very rare for this place or the space. So maybe even adding it to your front page or in this context, not just saying you know, we take 20%, but talk about it in terms of a value add. Like, we believe in transparency in the IT world and that's what we're bringing. Here is how we break down our prices. You can see our commissions and what our freelancers make or our specialists make. That's a huge value prop. Yeah, that's true. And yeah, I think it's, it's important to say this. Yeah, and, and it's also kind of like authentic branding. It's like, hey, we're, n we're n not bullshitting you. Like. 50% of all agencies or something. Okay, does someone have a random question about, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> uh, about <laughs> conversion <laughs> stuff? Anything? Any more questions, guys? Yeah, uh, you need a microphone. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, but I was gonna ask uh, how many of the decisions, because you spoke a lot about various elements on the page, um, 
how many of the decisions are data driven and how many are just subjective? Uh, you, you mean from the things that I say? In general, yeah. Uh, I, I mean, what I say right now, it's all just uh, gut feeling because I don't know the data. And whenever you test something, you might uh, you might think this is the winner, or if I if I change the set line, this will definitely be better. But you might be wrong. So for me, it's right now all gut feeling. However, depending on principles that I've learned over the years, um, but I would say in general, if people optimize websites or optimize, like try to optimize websites, it's almost all gut feeling, which is really bad. So whenever you have data that you can look into, you should always make use of it. And also, even if you have an opinion, like if all the things that I say today. Um, people shouldn't just change their websites, but they should actually, if they have the traffic to do it, um, actually look in the data, try to track things, do event tracking, ask users, ask people, and try to validate what I'm saying. Because I might be wrong, and uh, yeah, it's important just to do this. And also, no, that's all I want to say. Are <laughs> there any tools that you can use or suggest that people could... Uh, implement or incorporate yeah. into their processes? Yeah, so one thing that is pretty much, it can do everything when it comes to user feedback is Hotjar. So it's H-O-T-J-A-R. J -A -R. And uh, you can use it for mouse tracking, for user questionnaires, user feedback tools, blah, 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 blah. So this helps a lot. Um, also, you can do just moderated user tests. So just invite people, give them tasks, record them, see how they use your website. You can do eye tracking if you have the budget, but it's a bit pricey at times. So you can get a cheap eye tracker for like 170 euros from Elgato, which is usually for gaming, like for live streaming, and so people can see where you look. Um, but you can actually use it for your recordings. So I use, for example, OBS, the software here, which I use to put my bullshit commentary down there. And um, you could use this to record your screen, and then you see where people look while they are looking at your screen. And yeah, these are things that help very much, but it's always about what questions you ask. So it doesn't help to give the website to people and just tell them just go through it but you need to give them very specific tasks for example if you have an online shop you should say uh, buy blue jeans or uh, so this would be a very specific question so you see how will people navigate through a site will they use the search function will they use categories how do they use the filters blah 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 or you can use something very open where you can say like um, just uh, recommend your favorite piece of this online shop to your best friend, something like this. So it should always be with the task and then make use of it. Cool. Thanks. Yeah, I'll just give you mine. Um, when a service-based companies like this would have uh, a Facebook account, a twi Twitter account and that kind of thing, but maybe has only 20 followers on each platform, uh, would you mention it on the website or better to leave it out? So I wouldn't show off my Twitter follower number on my website. I wouldn't be like, join our 20 followers or something. Uh, however, I would still send people there if it's a channel that is important for you. Because if you have a Twitter channel or whatever platform um, and you post content on there, then your follower count will grow, especially if you only have like 20. So you can just invite your friends. So you will easily come above 100 at least. And... Um, yeah, I would I would mention it if I make use of the channel a lot. So don't mention it if you don't post anything any time, because then uh, yeah, then it it's like a dead body. So you don't want to mention that. But depends kind of. So yeah, I I in general I wouldn't set up a social account for every platform just because. So um, I would really only do it if I post on there actively. Uh, or question before we close the session, if there is any. If not, let's give applause one more time for Nails. Thank you so much for <laughs> insulting us. And uh, thank you everyone for coming. If you still have more questions, I think you can come to Nails after this event. And then we're going karaoke at 8 p.m. And he's one of the captains, so you can not also talk about um, there. I'm just, right. I'm just singing. You're I'm just singing. Captain. All right. Yeah, uh, also, um, I don't ask much, but if you want to follow me on Instagram, please I post follow a lot him on Instagram. I post <laughs> a lot of memes, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's all. Okay. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Thank you.